Hey everyone, how's it going? Sean here. Uh, today I have a quick overview of my new Traxxas Tandy. And if you don't know what the Tandy is, it's probably because it's not a real model. So this is an educational mock-up I did just to show the um, basics of topology optimization as well as aerodynamics. So the topology optimization is an automated software that allowed me to lightweight all of these wing supports that I've 3D printed here. Uh, you see it's done on both of these. And I used a software called Multi-Element Foils Lite for the design of the airfoils you see here. So let's go have some fun and test this out and we'll talk about some of the specifics and technical details at a later time. Let's jump straight to a few speed passes here and have some fun. Here we have the Tandy going by. Now what I'm going to do next is a speed pass the other direction. What I want you to notice here is how level the car is sitting. That means we're getting a little bit of aerodynamic downforce, but it's hard to quantify because I don't have a picture for comparison. So let's keep testing. I broke the front wing off, which means we're running just the rear wing. And I want you to notice here that the front end is actually slightly higher than the back end, which means we are definitely seeing appreciable downforce on the rear of the car, which actually isn't terribly good, but you'll see why in a second. Even as I go into hard braking, the back end stays really planted. So my braking is improved here. However, with the added weight over the back, the drag up that high, and the downforce only over the rear tires, it gets unstable as you see here. Whenever I just gave it a little bit of throttle when I was already moving, it lifts the front end right up. So it's not entirely desirable to run this with just one wing. It actually makes it really hard to control. And that instability is substantially worse in reverse as you might expect because the front end or the rear end gets really light as it starts to lift up and we get speed wobbles. Um, as you see here, I have almost no control over this. Somehow this thing survived. I was really happy that we didn't break the wing off. That meant I could continue testing. So let's go ahead and see if we can capture the rear end lifting again here, which is pretty tough to do because of how hard it is control to control at speed. Well, it looks like we're not going to get that. You see some of the tires picking up. Oh, and it smacks right on the wing on this curb right there. Um, and yep, yeah, looks like that's going away. So we're going to have to find out a way to pick back up testing. Um, let's go ahead and jump over to my 3D printer. Let's print all new parts and get back to the setup we had originally and find a more educated way to test all this stuff out. While we're waiting for those prints to finish up, let's go over some of the boring technical details that went into this. So I used a program called Multi-Element Airfoils Lite um, by, I believe, Dr. Patrick Hanley. And this is what gave me my estimates as to downforce. So if we look at the potential flow results, this is the front wing. Um, we got uh, 3.15 pounds of downforce, which is kind of unrealistic. I'd expect maybe half that, and I'd be really happy. This is at 45 miles an hour in air. So one and a half pounds is quite a bit on the front of that car. Um, you can see that it has a really low drag coefficient, which is part of the benefit of these multi-element airfoils. Uh, some of the RC wings out there are just ridiculously high angles of attack, um, so they're really draggy for any downforce you get. The airfoils I'm using specifically are NACA 5512s that I've slightly modified on the tail end to 3D print better. Um, two and a half inch cord length on the front, the two smaller elements are one inch, and on the rear it's a three inch by 1.25 inch. So we look at the surface pressures here, you can see that obviously there's the really low pressure region on the bottom and it does a really good job um, at being high efficiency where we get a um, very high or very good lift to drag ratio for the approximate angle of attack that we're running at. This rear wing is at a 30 degree angle of attack. So pretty efficient, super easy software to use if you want to play around with it. Um, and now let's jump into what I used for the wing supports. I did this on both. So here was what I modeled, just a really simple block model at first. And this was to give me an idea for how much space claim I had and what I wanted to start with. Then I went into this um, simulation workspace in Fusion 360, and you can see that I applied my aerodynamic loads and did what's called a topology or shape optimization where it tells me what material I can cut away to make sure that it's stiff for what I want but all of this extra margin is removed and I want that to make it as light as possible. If you want to learn some more about how to run these simulations check out some of my other videos I've covered this in a lot more detail. All right, the wings are done printing, so let's go ahead and put everything back together and get back to a little bit more of a controlled test setup so I don't wreck everything, break it all to pieces, and ruin the test for a second time. 
Which brings us to my advanced aerodynamics research laboratory. You can tell it's advanced because I have a leaf blower stacked on top of my aerodynamics book. Um, realistically, this is not scientific at all. It's just kind of a generalized test to see if I blow fast air over these wings, do I get any downforce action? First, we're going to take a look at the front end, and I'm blowing straight at it so I don't get any downward effect from the air. If you look as I increase the air speed, the front end definitely crouches quite a bit, and those end plates almost touch the wheels. I'm undoubtedly getting downforce here at whatever air speed this blower is blowing out at. So I'm pretty happy to see that we do get positive results. Now let's observe from a different angle. Here again, I'm just blowing straight at the front of the car, and you see that the front end crouches right away. We get a little bit in the back end, but really that front spoiler takes a lot of the air from the rear of the car. So we're definitely seeing um, action and benefit from those spoilers again. Um, let's go ahead and play around with just the rear wing now. Here we've got only the rear wing installed, and we're going to blow on the rear wing. Um, and as you see the wind speed pick up, you see the back end crouch and the front end lift up, which shows the same instability I was getting in my early testing when it was easy to pop a wheelie and I had a large amount of rear end crouch. Let's take a look again at a different angle, and you see that as we increase wind speed, we get a huge amount of crouch again, and the wing actually starts to deflect backwards, which means now it's not providing quite as much downforce because of the deflection, but uh, that may be a good thing because of how much more downforce the rear produces than the front in this case. So let's talk about what this really means. I mean, obviously with wings this large and hideous looking, we're gonna get downforce. These things are gigantic, they're eight inches wide, and like over three inches deep. Um, and, they're, and they're actually NACA airfoils. So we know they're gonna work and our simulation software show they will, but um, would I ever really use these for this car? Absolutely not. This car is designed for things much different than driving on a road course with a stiff suspension um, and trying to get super high traction on asphalt. So uh, they work, but I would never use them is the easiest answer, I guess. All right, we saw that the wings are actually doing their job and they're creating some downforce. We don't have an exact number on that, but we saw pretty uh, distinct results. Um, what we also know that these wings are going to do, though, is make this car pretty unstable on anything but flat ground going straight forward. Wings are only good in one direction, really. So if this thing gets turned around like you see some Indy cars, it could possibly lift up on the back end. Or if I get too high of an, uh, an attack angle, say I'm going up a jump, it may even try and push the front end up or it'll slam it down and it'll nosedive. I don't really know, I just know that it's going to be unpredictable and undesirable. So let's go ahead and test and see just how bad we get. To find out, we're just going to send it. So here we go off the ramp, and sorry to do this to you folks, but to find out what happens next, you're going to have to check out my first ever installment of Will It Fail Friday, coming up this Friday. Um, so please uh, like and subscribe, and come back soon to find out just how horribly wrong this went, or didn't go.